All right, welcome to the last part of this tutorial where I'm gonna show you how to uh, tweak the rig so we can create a nice post to send to ZBrush. All the hard work really is done. This is more about uh, fine tuning what we already have. Uh, I think it did a pretty good job with kind of like the default settings, but I'm just gonna go through certain things to, uh, to make them look better. Uh, before I do that though, I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to send what we have right now into ZBrush so that you can keep sculpting if you like this pose. And you have, you know, the ability to literally post it any way you want to. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention at the end of last video is that once you finish with your AccuRig, to get out of the AccuRig and to finalize it, you just need to click on the AccuRig button that you will get um, or that you will have in the modify panel at the top right, um, which, you know, I can go back in, but there's no point. <laughs> so I can select any of the, the tools that I have uh, or any, any of the uh, the meshes, click on AccuRig, but it's going to show me the process again to re-rig it, which I don't want to do um, at this stage because I have done it. Uh, so you just click on that and you will get out um, of AccuRig and then you still have your motion and your rig and everything. If you want to change the, the pose, let's say that you're happy with this pose as a, as a starting point, but you want you know to have the arm lift up or whatever, you can use the edit pose, click on edit pose, and then you have your rig in here. That's the, um, I think this is the, the, the most powerful workflow. You can just go ahead and do things like this. Uh, you can rotate. Obviously, this is an IK um, setup. So let's say that uh, I prefer this <laughs> for whatever reason, right? I can just go ahead and close this and send this pose. Uh, but, you know, I was happy with the previous one. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you that this is how it works. Now, before I go ahead and tweak the rig and tweak all the things that I want to show you, um, additionally to what I have already, you know, went through, um, if I want to send this to ZBrush, all I have to do is select all of these pieces, right? Go to the top, and let me just show you what I have in ZBrush, by the way. So I have my uh, T-Pose or A-Pose. Um, this is essentially what we send to um, Character Creator before I rigged it. Yeah, I just select this, click on this icon that now it is available. By the way, uh, sorry, I'm just jumping ahead. One of the things that you'll notice is that after we got out of AccuRig, um, Character Creator created this section or this tab called character. So this thing is not a prop anymore, right? Because we now have a rig and we have the ability to um, to move it around. So just wanted to highlight that now this is a character. So I just went ahead, selected these things. This becomes available as soon as you select something. So it doesn't have to be all of them. If, if I want to just send the head, I can do that. But in this case, I want to, you know, update everything. So let's select everything. And I'm just going to click on this button right here. And you'll see that if I leave the settings as they are and I click on Go See, Character Creator 4 is going to create this character in this current pose because that's what I have selected into ZBrush. Now, I don't want to do that because if I leave these settings as they are, when I send it to ZBrush, the mesh is going to lose all the subdivision level. So we lose all the details. And that's precisely the reason why I like to use this, this software so that I can pose the character but retain all my sculpting and, and details, right? So instead of creating, I'm just going to switch the template to relink, right? And this is probably the most important uh, part of this video, right? So if you want to relink and match this current pose that we have with what you have in ZBrush, you need to relink, right? So yeah, I'm going to relink current pose, match model, um, scale, click on Go Z, and that's it. Pretty easy, right? So now we have that pose in ZBrush, right? Um, and the great thing about it is that I can go back and forth, right? So I can go back in here and say, you know what, let me change it a bit. maybe. Do something like that. Click on um, the ZBrush icon again. Make sure that it's relink. Go Z, and that's it. And as you can see, let me actually turn off the textures on all of the subtools. You'll see this is the lowest subdivision level. But if I select the body, I can go up in subdivision levels, and I still have all my details with the pose, which I can just go back and and refine. So I can click on all high, and now I have the details in all my meshes with the pose that I want. Uh, just to make it easier and just show you another example, I'm going to go all low again. And in here, I'm going to click on Edit Pose and just show you that you can make any pose that you want. So let's do that. That. This is not going to be my final pose or anything. I'm just literally uh, playing around with the rig and show you that you can do whatever you want. All right. So 
and maybe the head. Let's rotate it. And this will be a good pose to test the issue that we have here with the hard surface modeling, right? That this shouldn't be deforming as much. And that's one of the things that I'm going to show you how to tweak. All right, so what we have this new pose. Again, we just need to take those meshes, go to ZBrush, uh, sorry, the GoZ button, relink, and that's it. We now have this pose. Um, I did mention that I was going to show you something else, which is the pose manager, but we're going to get to that in a second. And the pose manager is just a great plugin from the Reolution guys that was created for um, you know, managing your poses between Character Creator 4 and um, ZBrush. But I'll get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and fix these um, issues first so that we don't have a, a, you know, a, this type of deformation in the, in the color, for example. Right, so I'm going to focus on that and show you a couple more things maybe that um, might be good to, to cover. All right, so let's go back in here. And what I'll do is we can play with this pose. I mean, it's not the right pose. If you want to reset the binding pose, you can click on this drop down and you can click on restore bind pose and that will set the, you know, the current pose. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that so you can see the full workflow. So restore bind pose. So now this is the one that we use as a kind of like a T pose. Um, let's send that to zero so that we can, we don't have this horrible one. And we can do that by doing the same process, relinking, go Z. And now we have essentially what we had at the beginning of this video, um, except, you know, without the, the textures. Alrighty. So now what I want to do is tweak this and make sure that these, when I deform these or when I uh, rotate my head, I don't have this deformation. So I'm going to select my head and I'm just going to rotate it this way. Not too much, something like this. All right. And then this is when we can uh, fine tune the rig. So I'm going to select the, um, the suit details. That's the one, actually let's hide everything so you can see. That's the one that contains this bit. Okay. So with that one selected, suit details, I can go ahead and from the modify uh, window here, I can go to the uh, skin weights. So the skin weights is the one that allows you to control how much weight, as the name says, is being used by the uh, by the rig or by the bone that is controlling this section. So the influence, if you will. So if I click on skin weights, um, everything is going to turn with this black color. There should be something white around somewhere, uh, or maybe blue. Here we go, <laughs> um, around the hips because that's the bone that I have selected. Let me show you something else. So you can do um, you can do color weights, which is currently what this looks like, but you might be familiar or more familiar with a grayscale where white or full white is um, the 100% weight of the vertex in a specific uh, join, and black is non-affected or is not being affected by the the mesh. So let me just go through that because I know that <laughs> might sound confusing for some of you. So color weights is just the way that this displays the the weight painting or the the skin weights. If I click on grayscale, it's just gonna be uh, black and white, which I think is easier to to understand, especially for what I'm going to show you. So the other thing is the bones. And this is what I mentioned in the previous video that I think this will uh, come in handy um, at this stage. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, go to the, um, you can actually select it from here, but I'm just going to use my arrow keys from here to actually find the head. Uh, we can collapse this and that will be pretty easy to do, but I'm just going to click on that one. And with the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm just going to go down in this hierarchy until I see the, the neck sort of going white. There we go. So it is partly attached to base spine too. And also the neck, these are the ones that we need to, to sort out. So let me just think about this. I think this should be part of the spine too, so that it moves with the torso. Because if I attach it to the neck, uh, the neck can move a little bit and then there will be a lot of intersecting uh, geometry. So what I'm going to do is select the spine too, right? And you see it gets highlighted here with blue and you also see it here in the hierarchy. Right. This is going to be a very non-technical way of uh, approaching this because that's how I prefer to do it. All I'm going to say about this is that this is the hierarchy of how this uh, rig is being set up. But that's it. It's just to find the right bone and you'll see it selected or highlighted with blue when you have selected. So I'm selecting it here, but it's the same thing as selecting it from here. As you can see, just two ways of doing the same thing. Now that I showed you this, I can go back to the scene just so that uh, we don't have two uh, duplicates of the same thing. All right. So in this one, what I'm going to do now is literally paint 
where I want this to maintain or or remain as a as a hard surface bit. So here we have the paint operations and we can use mirror as well, but um, it's pretty easy. So the plus or the brush with the plus is to add white and the one with the minus is to remove, right? So I can click on this one, right? And if I start painting here, you see how these sections start changing uh, the position of the vertex. And that is because I'm just adding more influence of this uh, joint of this bone to this section or to this set of points. But this is going to take a while, right? You can do it very manually and you can fine tune things very, very manually, like what I'm showing you right now. But just to do things a little bit faster, what I'm going to do is hide the rest so that it doesn't affect what I'm doing. And if you lose the skin weight, uh, kind of like vertex view, that is just because I accidentally selected the head. But if we go back to suit details, that's the one that we're editing. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that with the plus or the brush that has the plus to add weights, I'm going to set the strength to uh, one. So that is pretty strong. And the radius of the brush as well. And I'm just going to paint this whole thing. It's going to look a little bit weird as I do it, but don't worry too much about it. And I need to go to both sides as well. I'm going to do this uh, kind of like in real time first. And anything else that I need to do after this, I'll do it in a kind of like a time lapse if I need to. Just so that it's not boring for you to watch this. Because this is not the most um, exciting process. But it is important if you want to have something that uh, deforms nicely. All right. So I think we are almost there. And by the way, if you want to sort of um, hide this a little bit or, or reduce the size so the bones don't get in the way, uh, you can actually click here, display, and toggle them on and off, right? So you can do that. And that's obviously going to be a lot easier to, to see and manipulate things. And I'm just going to focus on the neck piece for now. So I think the other ones, even though they should be hard surface, if they deform a little bit, I think they, they're fine. Um, we can tweak that in ZBrush. It's just this one that is pretty, pretty obvious. And I think this is pretty much it. Okay, so you'll see as well that in this section with the spine too, there is a bit of gray on the shoulder pads. And that is, that is okay. Uh, it just means that when the, the spine moves, this section of the shoulder pads is going to move with that bone. So if I go to spine, let's go to this. And this is more, uh, there's more weight on the clavicle. And let's see what else we have here. Yep, so the upper arm, right? So I can do two things. I can go one by one and just literally selecting the upper arm um, twist and then just add more to it using the brush with the plus icon just so that the whole shoulder pad is white and it moves with the shoulder. Or I can do what I was doing before. Let's go back. Uh, I was spine too. Yep. So there's a little bit of um, skin weight in here. So what I can do is change to the minus one and then remove it. I don't like to remove things because then uh, in most cases, the software, and, and this is kind of like the same for anything or any software that, that deals with uh, weight painting, I believe. Um, if you just remove it, then that portion of that weight of that I'm removing doesn't really know where to attach it. So I prefer to just go through the process of adding to the sections that I need. Uh, but again, that's kind of like I was I was branching out in there. Um, the whole point of this step, at least, is to make sure like the entire, let's say, neck or this um, hard surface piece is white, which I have achieved and I can move on. All right, so I'm going to click on skin weights just to get out. And this is what I mentioned earlier that when you finish with the Accurig, you will see it in um, like black and you can click on it and then get out. It's the same thing for any of these uh, editing tools. So skin weight or Accurig, anything like that, you can just click and get out of that uh, mode. Uh, let's turn everything back on, right? And now if we edit the pose, select the, the entire um, rig on the entire character, click on edit pose, select the head. Uh, I'm also going to turn off these sort of uh, indicators of the bones and maybe this one as well. I think it's cleaner to, to work this way. Um, yeah, so select the head. I'm going to use the rotation. And now the head rotates nicely, um, but the, the next stays there, right? And that's just a weight painting thing. And I think that's that's great. Obviously, if you do extreme pose like that, there's going to be some intersection. But 
if this was a, a real character that you um, that was like animated or whatever, this shouldn't happen anyway. So there will be a limit, um, and that's precisely the point I think of this uh, of this design uh, to sort of like protect a bit. Anyway, so that is how you edit your rig or how you edit the uh, the weight painting of your rig. Um, now I'm going to show you a couple more things that you could do if you wanted to. Uh, a, a different way of approaching this. So let's say that, let's go ahead and add the motion just so that we can see more more deformation. So just the, the walk cycle in the motion, right? So I think everything works pretty well, um, but anything that is circular, and this is the reason um, I added some details that are quite round, as soon as you have a deformation on those areas, it will be pretty evident. So like I said, I think the default settings did a pretty good job. Um, maybe let's try to find an area. Maybe these ones. Maybe these ones you'll see they are rounded, but once you deform the thing or when you move the rig, uh, they kind of get stretched. So let's go ahead and see if we can, in, in a different way, we can tweak these ones, right? So again, these ones are part of the suit details. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to go to the uh, modify settings here go to the skin weights again and I'll do the same thing I'm just going to hide the bones just for a second and I'm gonna find the one I mean you can read them and, and try to make sense of them uh, but I literally just go with the arrow keys and scroll until I see there is some color coming through and then just find it so I think it would be something like the clavicle which makes sense or the arm twist so let's go ahead and see that all right, so yeah, upper arm twist base for the left arm. So that's that's what I need. Um, again, you can use the grayscale or you can use the color weight. Um, it's totally up to you. And in this case, I'm going to use the color weight. So you can see the difference. And red just means that is 100% um, weighted. So, you know, the influence would be 100% whenever it's, uh, whatever is red. The, the other way of working with this would be um, with selection. So I've been doing or I did the neck with paint. Uh, but you can also switch to selection so you can click on that one and you'll see now you have these green dots which represents the vertex of uh, of this mesh so I'm gonna go ahead and select just a few of these here and they get red so hopefully you can see that in the recording um, they just get highlighted with a red color so the next thing and remember this is a single uh, mesh or is a, a separate mesh in fact, let me go ahead and show you in ZBrush so that you know what I mean by that. Let's do an auto groups here. There we go. So this section right here is separate from the shoulder pad, right? It's just an insert mesh that we use. So because of that, I can select just a few of these points. And then here from the, um, uh, the select tools, I can click on either or. This one is to grow the selection and this one is to uh, shrink it. So I can grow the selection. You see it starts to grab more of those. So I'm just going to press this a few times just to make sure that I grab all the points that belong to this specific uh, object, right? So now that I have selected all of those, what I can do is in the uh, quick replace, you'll see these are the three different uh, bones, the upper arm, this one right here, the twist, the base twist and the clavicle, all of these three are sharing some of the influence for this piece right here. And that is the reason why once the, the character starts moving, um, it might deform because there's going to be three bones um, moving independently and sort of like pulling and pushing, right? But I want to maintain the shape. So I'm going to select the one that has the most influence, in this case, the upper arm twist. Uh, I think that's the yeah, probably the best one uh, for this. And yeah, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to click on one. So you see it has a weight of zero. Actually, the upper arm twist is the one that has the most. Uh, but I think I'm going to switch it. This could be a bit of back and forth, but I think I'm going to select the upper arm twist two just to show you that it has 0 0.65, right? 0 0.65 of weight. So this one has the most influence on that entire section this entire piece, but I just want to focus on the bolt in here. And that would be this, right? So I'm going to select that one and click on one. And you'll see now this is full white, right? So it has all the, the influence in this section. 
So hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to replicate or go through the, the same process once more uh, because I know this might be confusing on the other side. Uh, but basically, whatever I move this highlighted join right here, which is the uh, the upper arm or the base arm twist, that ho the one that I have selected here, this is going to move with it, right? So let's see. When I do this, uh, let's move to another one so that you can see and hide bones. All right, something like that. So when I move this, you'll see that section or this bolt right here remains consistent, like the the size of it doesn't change, but it does move with the arm. So that's exactly what I wanted. Um, and this only happens in certain places that um, you might want to fine tune. Um, and I think this works right. And if you compare this, that has a consistent, you know, cylindrical shape compared to this one at this stage, um, you know, it's, it might not be that obvious, but this is kind of like stretched out in this fashion. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Right? It will be a lot more evident if I were to push the arm in a different way from the clavicle or away from the clavicle because, again, this has uh, weights from the clavicle as well as the arm. So let's do it on the other side just so that you can really get a, a good grasp on the process. So same thing. I'm just going to select uh, a bone here in the hierarchy and I'm going to go pressing the arrow keys until I find this one. So the clavicle and I think I'm going to go for the right arm. Here we go. So the upper arm twist. Same deal, right? So again, just to repeat the process, once you have found like the bone that has most of the color in this case, I'm just going to make sure I have the selection of the vertex and not the weight pane, although you can do the weight pane. By the way, the, the reason I'm showing you the difference is because in this case, it's pretty hard to use the, uh, the weight pane to paint the vertex that are hidden within this piece. Right? So in ZBrush, if I want to paint the vertex that are inside this bolt, I can isolate things and do it this way. Uh, but in Character Creator, it's a little bit easier doing it this way. So uh, let's select a few of these vertex just to select this bolt and grow the selection, clicking a few times just to make sure I have everything. And again, this has the influence of the upper arm twist 2, 1, and the clavicle. And I'm going to use the one. In most cases, you want to go for the one that has the most weight. But in this specific case, I want to go for a uh, twist one just because um, I think, you know, it, it remains more in the center. So let's get closer so you can see the, the change in the shape once I click on one. Um, and this one just means I'm going to give it full weight. So not 0 0.4 or 0 0.5, just the entire weight. So click on one and you'll see the the influence and the other ones just um, they disappeared and now we have a nice rounded consistent shape i think that's pretty much that's pretty much it really let's go to the head and we can go out of the skin weights all right so now if i play the animation that looks a lot better and we have a consistent shape all right um we could do the same thing with other pieces that uh, get deformed slightly if you want to like for example um, here around the hips this one is being stretched quite a bit and perhaps these ones around the the knee maybe we can just create kind of like a kneecap so that is um, you know straight all the time like it's, it's a hard shell and we can do that very very easily as well so let's go ahead and try that Maybe with this one. So again, those are part of the suit details. Um, again, that's the reason why I kept those as separate subtools so that it is easier to um, to edit. All right. So the suit details here. Let's go again into the skin weights. All right. And I'm going to find the knee that I need to edit. So this one right here. So it would be the right, um, the right leg, the base uh, thigh twist. That's the one that has the most influence. Uh, but instead of following the thigh, I might want this to follow something like the, the shin. So let's go let's try to find that one. There we go. So the calves twist one. So that's this bone here, the one that is highlighted in blue. It's hard to see actually there. So this is the, the one that is highlighted, right? And most of the influence of this pad is, you know, belongs to this bone. So if I attach or if I assign 100% uh, influence to this kneecap thing is going to always be straight and only is going to bend based on this bone. So 
hopefully that makes sense but uh, let me just go through it really so I'm gonna click on selection select some points in here follow the same process that I just show you uh, to select all the vertex and you'll see it has um, the calf twist 0.4 as well as the thigh so I want to assign 100% to the calf to this bone right here so I'm gonna go for one and that's it you'll see how that changes straight away so that that works um, let's go ahead and see how that works or how it uh, animates compared to the other one so the other one is deforming weirdly this one is um, you know it's a hard shell let's say and it protects the knee and it just moves with it like so so that might be a, a good thing for if you're doing like a uh, you know some space boots for your character and it has like some protection as well um, you can tweak that right so very very easily let's do the same for the other one so otherwise it'll be quite weird to have one not the other one um, just using the arrow keys again just try to find the one that I need which is this one the calf and that's it uh, by the way if you already know the name <laughs> again this is kind of like my way of working but if you know the name you can just search it and it's easier okay so that one would be that all right so I'm just going to select these points uh, by the way be careful if you have like something selected like I had in here if you press uh, I think it's control yeah if you press control you can add to the selection right but in this case I want to make sure I have nothing selected so you can click somewhere in the space or empty space select a few and let's go ahead throw the selection there we go and again I'm gonna select the calf twist not this thigh twist the calf twist and assign 100% that's it right um, the other pieces are more like a leather like a hard leather I think so it's fine that there is the formation in there and like I said you can go through all the pieces and do the same thing I'm gonna leave this portion of the video here so that we have enough time uh, to go through the pose manager and send this to ZBrush but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to to fine-tune uh, the skin weight and the, 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 the weight painting basically of this rig so let's get out of the weight painting or the skin weights uh, we have a nice animation now and we can now go ahead and test this by going to the head or to the entire character click on edit pose from this tab right here select the head let's make it look this way make it more interesting um, this there's a little bit of um, intersection here but it doesn't matter I want to show you something else um, yeah so let's say that we're happy with this I'm just gonna go ahead and take all of that send it to ZBrush and I'm gonna relink it okay and I'll go back and forth in a bit just to show you so again remember it's relinking what we need we need to make sure that that's highlighted and that's it we have a nice pose everything that we did in terms of tweaking the meshes came through things like that uh, there are other things that you might want to do in ZBrush like for example the bending here of the knee um, you can tweak that within character creator using the uh, weight painting just like manually paint some of the weights but this is the type of thing that I will probably just do in ZBrush just fine-tune it especially when it comes to something that has clothing because it will affect the the way that uh, the the falls and the wrinkles are being created depending on the tension points right so um, yeah I think I'm pretty happy with this the the other thing that I was going to mention or the that I wanted to show you is the plugin so what I'm gonna do is leave this video here and then create an extra video where I'm going to focus just on the pose manager because I think it's quite versatile and gives you a lot of options uh, so that you can save and edit your poses while maintaining all of your details and the subdivision levels. Alright, so I'll see you in the last video.